Thanks so much. Give me the honour, mate. Thanks. Uh, g'day, guys. Vince Regari, Sydney Morning Herald. Um, I'll ask you both a question. Arnie, can you just give us like a squad update? Is everyone available for selection? I know Jackson's had a bit of a knock at training. Will he be right? Um, and then, Harry, to you, um, what does this game mean for you as a, an adopted Australian, so to speak, to play against England at Wembley must be massive for you? Well, uh, I mean, yeah, Harry's answer will be long in the mind, so mine will be short. So uh, everyone is fit and everyone's ready. Yeah, um, just really looking forward to it. Um, I know I said before when when the fixture got released, it was one that you know all the boys couldn't wait for. Um, and obviously coming into camp early this week and just seeing the energy levels from everyone. Um, and yeah, we're, we're ready for the game, and um, yeah, hopefully it's a good result for us. Some of the boys have good stories about the morning of 2003 when they all watched uh, Australia beat England at Upton Park and then went to school that day, sort of walking on air. Um, did you watch that game from Scotland? Any memory of it? Were you aware of the soccer rules back then? <laughs> no, I would have been five, so um, I don't really remember remember much from back then. Obviously, it's been it's been mentioned by a few of the a few of the older lads in the squad, should we say, um, and the coaching staff as well. So yeah, we're we're, we're very aware of it, um, and yeah, it's one we'll look to we'll look to draw from from inspiration. Thank uh, you, from the Sun. Um, Arnie, can I ask you about? Um, Ange Postacoglu's um, comments um, where he said that um, even with the um, success of the Women's World Cup that he can't see uh, Australian football ever being able to take the big step it needs to take. What, what, what your response to that to that was? Yeah, look, I think Ange has a point. And, um, but, uh, you know, I think we've just got to look at probably the past successes we've had at the Men's World Cup and the Women's World Cup and really move forward from there. You know, I think if we dwell too long or too much in the past and of how it's been for so many years that uh, there has to be one point where we say, well, you know, now we move forward. And I think that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to do, but I do think uh, with the generation of kids that are coming through, um, we've got some good youngsters coming through that we can reinvigorate the sport. And as a follow-up to that, clearly the, what the Matildas did at the Women's World Cup inspired, you know, lots of boy players as well as um, as well as girl players but would a, uh, a men's world cup being hosted in Australia make an appreciable difference but uh, on the other hand does 2034 already look like it's sewn up by the Saudis and not worth <laughs> not worth paying for I don't I, I'm not in uh, in the detail of, of 2034 if that's happening but I will say that uh, it would help the sport enormously um, to, to have a World Cup in Australia and I think we showed that uh, we're great hosts um, but uh, the best point part of that would be we wouldn't have to qualify we'd be directly in so <laughs> that would make my job a lot easier if I'm still around um, Michael Butler from The Guardian um, you had uh, Angie and Gus Hiddick to uh, meet, meet the squad can you just talk about how that came about and what sort of relationship you have with uh, both of those people yeah, look, um, I've got a special relationship with both. Uh, you know, I've known Ange for 40 odd years and played against him, coached against him, and worked with him, and and, and that's so we've had a great connection for years. And with Hus, um, he's pretty much a, a mentor to me, and like a brother, father. Or <laughs> I've got to be careful what I say because he's not that old, but um, <clears throat> he's uh, always been a great man to me and a, a great mentor to me, and. Uh, I worked under Hus uh, the 2006 uh, World Cup uh, as, his, uh, as his assistant and you know it's just the culture that we bring. I think uh, when you see the Socceroos and the Matildas uh, really bring the nation together and that's the culture of the, the national teams and this isn't my team, this is the nation's team and uh, the respect that uh, we have for ex-players, um, we had Mila Yednak and, and that at training yesterday. Um, also, um, as you said with Ange and Hus coming in, that uh, they're legends of the sport and uh, you know, they belong so firmly in the Socceroos and at the end of the day, as I said, it's not, it's not my team and it's, uh, you know, it's the boys uh, you know, get inspired by those type of people and you know, some ge the generation, the older generation look back at what Hus did for us, qualifying us for the first time in 32 years and really changed things for the national teams we've qualified ever since 
and uh, with Ange, with everything that he's done for Australian football and uh, and what he's doing for Tottenham now is uh, is amazing, and the whole country's proud of him. It was a really uh, a great moment to have him with us. Um, as a follow-up to that, it, during Andrew's team talk, he said that um, nothing is given to any Australian footballer, and you have to earn it. Um, and that as, if if you see from Australia, that puts you down a peg or two. What did you make of those comments, and how much of you do you think is sort of mind games? I wasn't listening. <laughs> he was talking to the players, not the coaches. No, he was uh, just joking. But <clears throat> no, that's. Uh, Probably the way that the sport's been for years is we uh, get underestimated. We, um, you know, as I said, I've said the story here in Britain in 2003. I was assistant coach to Frank Ferreira, exactly the same thing with Sven Goran Eriksson. It was like, oh, we're only just playing against Australia, we'll play two different teams. And if anything, that motivated the players even more, our, our players, because it was like, oh, they don't respect us to be on the field with us, you know, for, to play a proper game. And that's the Australian mentality. You know, when we've got our backs to the walls and no one gives us a chance, that's when we come, well, that's when we're at our best. And so, you know, that will only continue, I can imagine. But uh, with uh, a lot of good things happening for the sport at the moment, it's uh, an exciting future. Hey. Uh, Correll, you were, you were, sorry. Uh, you, you, you were a big part of the uh, of that 2003 triumph. Some great stories from you this week. I was reading in the in the press about about that sort of feeling of disrespect. Do you feel it's very different this time for this match? Do you feel that you know with all the stuff that Gareth Southgate suggesting that you, you are now treated as serious contenders? Yeah. Well, uh, 2003 we played at Upton Park. I think that also was a bit of a lack of respect in 2001 when we played at Wembley. And now, in 2023, it's now, you know, what we've done at the World Cup, we're ranked number 27 in the world, and obviously England are five, that uh, the respect is there. And, um, you know, it's uh, a great honour, and we're grateful to the English FA, really grateful that they thought of us and want, and we come to an agreement to play here. Um, they've got, they're a marvellous team, and we're looking forward to playing them tomorrow night, but the most important thing is, is ourselves, and making sure we get our performance right and it's a great opportunity for these boys uh, to be on a big stage and show all the UK and Europe uh, how good they are and um, they can enhance their own careers so it's, uh, it's going to be an exciting night. Uh, as one of life's optimists do you see a day when football is at the, the heart and centre of sport in Australia? I'd love to see it but I don't know if I will. Um, when I say that, you know, there was a, a great legend of Australian football many, many years ago called Johnny Warren, who said, uh, I told you so. And, um, you know, nothing's really happened since then either. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it, it is what it is. We have, uh, you know, a sport in Australia, AFL, which is, you know, as Hans said, the indigenous sport, which is the biggest sport in the country. And at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of funds, a lot of money put into AFL, but it's only played in one country. And we're playing in a world uh, sport, and we don't get anywhere near the resources or the help that uh, those, that sport does. And, uh, you know, we see the Prime Minister and the governments, they love coming out to watch, you know, the Matildas and the Socceroos with scarves on, but they must lose them when they go home. So do you, do you want to see more funding for the sport? We don't have a home of football. Whether you can believe that or not, we don't have a home of football. When the soccer is coming to Sydney to train, we have to train on a rugby league field where they remove the posts and put a soccer post up. That's, a, that's the truth. And <clears throat> as I said, we are the highest participated sport at grassroots. And um, as I said, we don't have a home of football at all. Where you know, the last four days, three days, where's England been? George's Park, and you know they're coming down. So it's a it's a place where it inspires the players, a place where it's a home, a place where you build a culture, and uh, and we don't have anything like that. And that for me, since the World Cup, that was the thing that I said after the World Cup. Hopefully, this will make something change, and we'll get government funding and help to to inspire the kids' lives and fulfil the kids' dreams because we've, got, we've had so many 
good, great footballers that have left the country because they've had to to earn a living and to fulfil their dreams. And you know, Harry Kuehl, Mark Laduca, Timmy Cale, Schwarzer, all these guys. And this generation is is going to be the next. Yeah, he wants to answer a question. <laughs> you can I'm running out of energy. Well, don't get too comfortable, Arnie, because I will have one more for you. Um, but Harry, just to give Arnie a break, um, <laughs> how um, much have you been looking forward to this camp just on the back of what's been a difficult run for you at Leicester? I know you've got a run um, in the championship, I think for the first time this season the other day, um, to come back into Socceroos camp where you know you're valued and you know you'll get a run must be something that you've been looking forward to, especially for, for a game of this magnitude. Yeah, um, it's, it's been an up and down season for me personally. Um, obviously, had you know a few discussions with the with the manager, um, really open and honest in, in pre season. Um, and yeah, I've obviously not been playing as as much as I'd like, and it's probably a different role for me this season in terms of I'm not going to start every week. Um, but you know, he made it clear to the group um, that. You know, everyone is needed um, if we're going to, you know, have a successful season and, and be up there and and get promoted. Then, you know, every member of the squad is needed. So, um, yeah, it's just about being ready. You know, when called upon, um, and I felt like I'd done that. Obviously, with the defeat in the cup, but my first start in the league there on Saturday, I felt like I equipped myself well. Um, and yeah, that's all I can do is is be ready. You know, when when called upon. Um. Arnie, part of what Ange said to the group um, yesterday, and I'm sure you've said the same thing and, and will do, uh, is about seizing the moment at Wembley and not just enjoying being there, but making it a memorable night by, by winning. Um, yep. How motivated are you and the squad by the sort of possibilities and, and the lift that it would give the game back home to, to have yep. another special moment for the Socceroos to hang their hat on? Yeah, look, it's, Vince, it's, uh, it's never been any different with me and for me. It's uh, from day one I've been in this job, it's been about, it was always be, being about the greatest soccer team in history. And uh, we've achieved that, but I want more. Otherwise, I wouldn't have stayed on, I would have left. And, uh, you know, those type of speeches that Ange made yesterday, it was very similar to what we've been saying for years about doing it for the kids in Australia and the nation and your family and people that are close by and uh, and for the sport, as you said. So we go out there tomorrow night and we approach it any other way. Of course, full house, which is amazing. And But we've had the, you know, <clears throat> we've had um, a lot of games in, in big stadiums with big crowds, you know, like we just played Argentina and, and China with 70,000 and Mexico and in Dallas with 65, 70,000 and plus Qatar and so these boys and and you know it's a new generation we're bringing through that um, we're a very young squad we've got 11 players, uh, 12 players with uh, less than 10 caps in this squad, we've got uh, between 11 and 20 caps we've got 6 and only 5 or 6 older players that are over 20 caps so it's a it's a bit of a rebuild and regeneration of the, the squad and uh, I know one thing is they will run till they drop, the energy will be there and they'll uh, put in the performance of their lives. Uh, uh, can I ask what, what uh, for you would constitute success tomorrow? Win. Yeah. And no, that's not being arrogant. That's just mm -hmm. the mentality we have. Every time we go in the park, it's we're not going out there to try not to lose, you know, or try to draw. We're going out to win the game. That's uh, the, the approach we always have. And which part, like tactically, do you think would allow you to do that? Is there a, a part of the England squad or a part of their setup that you're that you're targeting? No, look, I can't tell you that. But, uh, <laughs> I thought I'd try. <laughs> no, but uh, look, England are fantastic. Team, as I said, and uh, Gareth Southgate is a great coach, wonderful man, and uh, I look forward to seeing him tomorrow night. And again, we're very appreciative of the invitation to play here, and we're looking forward to the match. Thank you. Thank you. Just Harry, I just wonder whether you see this match tomorrow as a way of reminding people you know, yes. I'm here still, you know, it's, since it's easy when you drop down a division, you know, have a poor start to the season or a mediocre start to the season, that you drop off the radar a bit. Do you see this as a high-profile opportunity? Um, you could say that, but, 
there's kind of only two people that I need to, you know, let know that I'm here. There's obviously this man sitting to the left of me and my, my club manager. Um, you know, they're the ones that are going to pick me and select me. So, um, yeah, I've just got to kind of do my job is, you know, prepare the same, you know, if I'm, you know, playing or not playing as, as I do every week, really. Um, and, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. And Graham, a word on H. I mean, is he an inspiration to the rest of the squad? 100%. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, when he decided to come and play for Australia with the Olympic team, it was uh, a great moment for myself and, and Australian football that uh, he's the Minister of Defence in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Take it Better be anyway. Nice. Okay. Lovely. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.